ladies at the Baptist Church knew what was coming next, or at least they thought they did, when their friend, a longtime prominent member, told them about the rough time she had gone through, and then said, the only thing that got me through that terrible time was, and they all expected her to say, my faith, but instead she said, my yoga class. The only thing that got me through that terrible time was my yoga class, she said. Some of her listeners nodded in agreement, but others' jaws dropped in shock. They were horrified at what she said, because yoga is a form of pagan idolatry. From the Ten Commandments onward, the Bible condemns idolatry and condemns worshiping other gods. Welcome to Bible Nook's worship service. Pastor David Reed has authored numerous books, served as a contributing editor of Dr. Walter Martin's Christian Research Journal, taught at Spurgeon's in London, and pastored Emmanuel Baptist Church in New Bedford, Massachusetts. He now provides these worship services for individuals at home and free to use by small groups and churches. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you provide the opportunity for your people to come together to worship you, whether in person or remotely, as the opportunity allows. And so we thank you that we have the opportunity now to turn to your word, the Bible, to receive your instruction and guidance and the wisdom that you've put into that holy book. And we thank you that we also can lift our voices together in songs of praise to you, to worship you and adore you. We thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to us through your word and through your creation and giving us the opportunity to have a relationship with you by turning to you in faith. So we pray your blessing now on our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join in singing, Were You There?
When the disciples asked our Lord Jesus to teach them how to pray, he gave them what we call today the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer, as an example of our priorities in prayer when we approach the Lord. And Christians have been repeating that prayer together as their own personal prayer down through the centuries. Let's join together now as we lift our voices in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At the end of today's service, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So be sure to have some bread and juice on hand so that we can celebrate communion together after the message. This Bible Nook ministry hosts a weekly remote Bible study and prayer meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays during the months from September through June. It's currently on summer recess, but will resume the first Wednesday in September, and you're most welcome to join us then. Bible Nook also provides free online resources in the form of websites at a dozen different domains. At the TOB Bible dot com domain, we provide a free modern Bible translation online, the original Bible for modern readers. It's copyright free and can be read online or downloaded and is also available in print. The Bible we provide at Bible for the end times dot com can be read online or downloaded for free and features footnotes highlighting and discussing passages on the end times, the last days, and other important prophecies. At doorstepbible.com, we provide a free Bible in digital PDF format with footnotes that enable you to answer Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to your door. And that Bible is available in print in a regular edition and also in a stealth edition that's just labeled Holy Bible on the cover. Our AnswerJW.com website provides other extensive resources on that cult, including a free online version of the book, How to Rescue Your Loved One from the Watchtower. Our Left Behind Answer.com website examines the Bible verses related to that controversial new teaching. And our UN versus IL.com website explores the roles of Israel and the United Nations in the end times prophecy. Our comefollowjesus.net site offers an introduction to biblical Christianity for non-believers and new believers. And our main website, biblenook.com, provides links to all the sites I just mentioned and features lots of other helpful material. Our videos of worship services and individual messages remain available for streaming at youtube.com slash Bible Nook and at facebook.com slash Bible Nook Ministry. These live streamed services are aimed at providing traditional worship services for believers who otherwise would not have them because they're confined to the home or because they don't have a nearby church that sings traditional hymns and preaches Bible messages. And they're also aimed at reaching the world with messages proclaiming and upholding the gospel of Christ. We pay Facebook to boost our messages, and we pay Google to advertise our YouTube messages, with the result that the thought-provoking thumbnails, some of which you see here, reach millions of people. Toward the end of 2023, Facebook and Google reported more than a quarter million total views for our message on Israel and Armageddon. 
a flood of responses and comments, including from many non-believers and many comments from inside Israel itself, proved that this video got many people thinking and talking about the gospel message. The quarter million views reported for that message shows that for a very small ministry with a very small budget, Bible Nook reaches a very large audience. During the year 2023, we received gifts totaling $5,326, and we spent $5,875 on web hosting and domains, post office expenses, Zoom, and our call-in conference line. But overwhelmingly, we spent that money on boosting messages on Facebook and YouTube. As you can see, we had a shortfall for the year of $549, but my wife and I were glad to cover that from our own personal funds to keep boosting messages that were generating so much interest. No one takes any salary from Bible Nook. To maintain our freedom of speech, we have not applied to the government for their approval as a ministry, but all the gifts we receive go directly to the expense of spreading Bible messages. If you're being blessed by this ministry, or if the Lord moves your heart to spend some of your resources on our gospel outreach, you can do so by visiting biblenook.com and clicking the donate button on the home page, or by sending a check to Bible Nook 214 Onset Ave, Suite 1464, Onset, Massachusetts. 02558. Today's scripture reading is from Revelation chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like a blazing fire, and whose feet are like polished bronze. I know your deeds your love, your faith, your service, your perseverance, and your latter deeds are greater than your first. But I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants to be sexually immoral and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Even though I have given her time to repent of her immorality, she is unwilling. Behold, I will cast her onto a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer great tribulation unless they repent of her deeds. Then I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. But I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned the so-called deep things of Satan, I will place no further burden upon you. Nevertheless, hold fast to what you have until I come. And to the one who overcomes and continues in my work until the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter, and shatter them like pottery, just as I have received authority from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading of his word. Now let's join together in singing Immortal Invisible. Bless you. 
The ladies at the Baptist Church knew what was coming next, or at least they thought they did, when their friend, a longtime prominent member, told them about the rough time she had gone through, and then said, the only thing that got me through that terrible time was, and they all expected her to say, my faith, but instead she said, my yoga class. The only thing that got me through that terrible time was my yoga class, she said. Some of her listeners nodded in agreement, but others' jaws dropped in shock. They were horrified at what she said, because yoga is a form of pagan idolatry. From the Ten Commandments onward, the Bible condemns idolatry and condemns worshiping other gods. It's a big thing. It's not some minor triviality. Almighty God began the Ten Commandments by saying, first of all, you are to have no other gods besides me. And then he said, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above, on the earth below, or in the waters beneath. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. How does yoga disregard those commandments? Yoga poses are associated with Hindu gods and goddesses whose idols display that pose. Visitors to India will see people stop on the sidewalk in front of a Hindu temple and assume the yoga pose of that temple's god or goddess. Those who popularized yoga in this country claimed it was not religious. But the old yoga.com website featured an article titled, The Ultimate Goal of Yoga. And it says very plainly in that article titled, The Ultimate Goal of Yoga, in all schools of yoga, the goal of the practitioner is the attainment of perfect tranquility and spiritual insight while meditating on Brahman, the Hindu concept of divinity. So even if the local yoga teacher chooses to hide it, the yoga.com website admits that yoga is religious. Its goal is spiritual insight through the Hindu concept of divinity. That yoga.com website was no longer operational the last time I checked, but you can still find that article by using the Wayback Machine at www.archive.org, where snapshots of past versions of websites are preserved in a huge archive. Just paste in the URL yoga.com slash article slash ultimate dash goal dash yoga, and the Wayback Machine will display copies of that page that it preserved over the years. 
That article on the ultimate goal of yoga reveals that yoga is indeed religious. Yoga.com proudly admits that yoga's ultimate goal is spiritual insight to the Hindu concept of divinity. You may be familiar with the magazine and website Christianity Today. Well, there's also a Hinduism today for Hindus. And a recent article there says, Swami Vivekananda's famous speech at the World Parliament of Religions in 1893, along with his subsequent teaching mission in the West, popularized yoga and meditation in the West. The great religions of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, now widespread, are all Indian exports. Hindu missionaries, Swami Vivekananda and Paramahansa Yogananda, came to the U.S. and made Hindu meditation popular here. But Maharishi Mahesh Yogi had the most success because he called it transcendental meditation and claimed it was not religious. Yoga and New Age meditation classes may teach you that you'll be contacted by a spirit guide after you succeed in emptying your mind and that you will then build a relationship with that spirit guide. The term spirit guide may not always be used as they may be called ascended masters, or unseen helpers, or angels, or archangels. Bible readers know, of course, that any such contact with the spirit world is demonic and should be avoided. Eastern religious meditation is totally different from the meditation the Bible recommends. The sort of meditation the Bible recommends is to think deeply about the things of God, actively using your mind. Philippians 4.8 says, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. Many modern translations render that, think about these things. This means to actively use your mind to think deeply about good things. But the New Age Eastern meditation of yoga, Buddhism, and Hinduism is quite different. Actually, the exact opposite. Eastern meditation involves emptying your mind, clearing your mind of all thought, so that you're not thinking at all. The goal is to put you into an altered state of consciousness where your mind is empty. Just like drunkenness or being high on psychedelic drugs, that empty mind is an open invitation to demonic invasion. One ancient yoga text says you will release a goddess from the base of your spine. That yoga text says Kundalini is lying coiled at the base of the spine, represented as either a goddess or a sleeping serpent waiting to be awakened. The spirits or ascended masters that may be encountered during yoga meditation are actually demons, angels of Satan, pretending to be angels of light. The religious aspect of yoga also involves prayer to Hindu gods and goddesses. Those prayers are called mantras, a Hindu word for praying to Hindu deities. Instructors may tell new students that their mantra is just a meaningless sound to help them clear their mind. But that is not true. Mantras are prayers to Hindu gods. For example, the popular Ganesh or Ganesha mantra 
is a Sanskrit language prayer to an elephant-headed Hindu god. That mantra is not a meaningless sound, but when the Sanskrit is translated into English, it begins by saying, O Ganesha, God with a curved trunk. Similarly, the Lakshmi mantras are Sanskrit language prayers to Lakshmi, the Hindu goddess of prosperity. Lakshmi is also called Kamala, the first name of our vice president, Kamala Harris, who was given that name by her Hindu mother. Lakshmi mantras translated into English include the words, I meditate upon the greatest goddess. O wife of Lord Vishnu, give me higher intellect. Lakshmi, please illuminate my mind. I salute the divine Lakshmi, the Lakshmi of salvation. So promoting yoga among Christians, either by word or by example, is teaching idolatry and the worship of other gods, Hindu gods. It's not just the Old Testament that condemns this. In Paul's New Testament letter to the Romans, the apostle condemns those who honor false gods, like those Hindu idol gods in the form of humans or animals, like Ganesha, the elephant god. Paul wrote, Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images of mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Yoga teaches students to say mantras or prayers addressed to such images of animals, like Ganesha, the elephant god, and other Hindu idols. Remember that there's an invisible battle going on with the demonic forces of darkness waging war against the gospel of Christ. Every form of sorcery, witchcraft, magic, idolatry, and pagan worship is a tool of Satan the devil designed to lead people away from Christ. Dabbling in these things can be very dangerous. The Bible actually foretold that church people would be lured away by these things. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And that is what people do when, like that Baptist lady, they ignore what God says in the Bible to pursue the trappings of Hindu idolatry. People turn to such things, hoping to gain some advantage. They turn to divining rods, hoping to find water. They turn to fortune tellers, hoping to know their future. They turn to Hindu meditation and yoga, hoping to find relaxation and escape stress but instead they put themselves in great danger. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says, The sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Such warnings about demons bother some people because they associate demons with the silly superstitions of primitive people. They think we today are too intellectually advanced to talk about demons as if they're real. And they laugh at us Christians if we mention anything about Satan, the devil, and demons. But if we believe in the Bible, and if we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's pretty hard to avoid acknowledging that demons exist. If we steer clear of demonic pagan practices, we have nothing to fear from them. We belong to Jesus, and our Lord Jesus is infinitely more powerful than Satan and all his demons put together. 
But today, the teachings of the Bible are widely ridiculed and spoken against. The popular culture no longer believes that God created us and no longer believes that the Bible's teachings on what's right and wrong apply to us. But people aren't leaving a vacuum when they abandon Jesus and the Bible. They're substituting the worship of pagan gods instead. Despite this nation's Christian heritage, people today are placing statues of the false god Buddha in their gardens. People put their hope in the false god of good luck as they invest their earnings in gambling. Americans are turning to the demonic spirits associated with palm reading, fortune telling, tarot cards, horoscopes, zodiac signs, and astrology. People are seeking peace and emotional healing through Hindu Buddhist meditation and yoga classes. Many recite mantras calling upon Hindu gods at their meditation and exercise classes. People of the world do these things because they don't know the God of the Bible, don't know Christ and the power of his resurrection. But these things of the pagan world have no place in a church of God's people. Bringing such things into the church is condemned in the second chapter of Revelation, where the risen Christ gives the Apostle John messages for seven prominent Christian churches back in the first century. Our risen Lord appears to John in a vision, in a scene of heavenly glory. We find it in Revelation chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like a blazing fire, and whose feet are like polished bronze. The Son of God then commends that church for their good deeds. He says, I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, your perseverance, and your latter deeds are greater than your first. This is a faithful church that has accompanied, accomplished great things, a church that's moving on to bigger and greater things. But then Christ points out a serious problem in that church. But I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants to be sexually immoral and to eat food sacrificed to idols. This woman promoted idolatry and sexual immorality among God's people. In her case, it was a matter of sexual immorality and food sacrificed to idols. A modern Jezebel might similarly mislead her church by accepting gay and transgender lifestyles and by honoring the idols of Hindu gods through yoga practice and mantra prayers. The Lord went on to say, even though I have given her time to repent of her immorality, she is unwilling. Behold, I will cast her onto a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer great tribulation unless they repent of her deeds. Then I will strike her children dead and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches minds and hearts, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Wow, those were harsh words. But that shows us how seriously Jesus takes it when someone brings idolatry and sexual immorality into a church of his people. It amounts to being a modern Jezebel. And that's why the ladies' jaws dropped in that Baptist church when their friends said, the only thing that got me through that terrible time was my yoga class. Our Lord Jesus called on the Jezebel of the Thyatira church to repent 
and gave her time to change her ways, but she refused to repent. But today, anyone who may have promoted Hindu idolatry through yoga can now accept our Lord's call to repent, and Christ will freely forgive such sins. His sacrificial death on the cross liberates us from sin and makes us clean from the stain of sin. But what if your yoga class is very dear to you? What if you feel that it helps you cope with life? If the practice of yoga or Eastern meditation has been a cherished part of your life that you find difficult to give up for Christ, think of Jesus' words at Matthew 18.8, where he said, If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. If yoga has been as precious to you as your hand or your foot, ask the Lord, and he will help you throw away that activity that is so offensive to God. He will help you to have no other gods besides him. He'll help you to quit bowing down before the idols of pagan Eastern religions. He will help you abandon the mantras that are prayers to those idol gods. He'll help you walk with the one true living God who will give you peace and joy beyond anything offered by yoga. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that any who are listening now who may be enslaved to a false religious practice that's actually demonic and offensive to you, we pray, Lord, that each one will be liberated as they repent and turn to you in repentance and ask your forgiveness and your help in overcoming these practices and leaving them behind. We thank you, Lord, that in your mercy, you welcome sinners to repent of their sins, whatever they may be, and turn to you in peace. We thank you, Lord, for providing your word to instruct us what's right and what's wrong. And we pray that you'll help us not to be swayed by this wicked world that ignores your word, but rather that we'll each listen to your word and walk with you in the way that leads to everlasting life. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with these wonderful things from your word. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in singing, There's Within My Heart a Melody. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee Peace be still In all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know There's my every longing Peace be singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. In my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of his grace, resting neath his sheltering wing. Always looking on his smiling face, that is why I shout and sing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know 
fills my every longing. He's be singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. He's me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Almighty God told the prophet Jeremiah of the time when the Old Covenant that God established through Moses would be replaced by a New Covenant. And our Lord Jesus instituted that New Covenant the night before he went to the cross. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to die on that cross for us. And we thank you that we can take this bread, this reminder of his body broken for us, and that we can show our faith by partaking together. We thank you and pray your blessing now as we consume this bread representing the body of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all partake of the body of Christ. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood of your Son poured out at the cross for us so that we might be cleansed by his blood, cleansed of sin and made acceptable to you, that we might be with you forever and ever and enjoy everlasting life in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for that blood of your Son poured out of the cross and for this opportunity to express our faith by consuming this representation of the blood of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all partake of the blood of Christ. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's join in singing the first verse of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kings. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come together apart from the troubles of this world, to focus on you, to listen to your word, and to lift our voices in songs of praise to you. Help us, please, Lord, to keep your word alive in our hearts as we go about our business, and to keep your gospel on our lips to share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you till we meet again.
God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, God uphold you with his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. Our Wednesday evening remote Bible study and prayer meeting is currently on summer recess. So we'll look forward to seeing you again next time for our Sunday service. God bless. Keep safe.